This is the Cardinal Cowboy Show. Giddy up! Woo! We're live. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, excited to announce we have Patty and Mark McCluskey on the Cardinal Cowboy Show. Well, it's been a whirlwind for you guys over the last few months. It's been an interesting summer, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, if everybody is not familiar, and I, that's hard to imagine, you've been all over the world. I've seen you on Fox News. I've seen you uh, all over St. Louis's news. Um, just amazing the happenings. Tell everybody what's anything exciting going on in your world. Well, the only thing that's uh, exciting is the uh, the city police finally got around to issuing citations on nine trespassers. Right, three to five hundred people trespass in the neighborhood some of whom boast on television about being there, and they, they send like parking tickets to nine of them, and the city attorney's office hasn't decided whether they're gonna even prosecute those nine. Wow, okay. Meanwhile, we've got felony charges pending and, against and them. And I understand, yeah, they, they charge you with felony mishandling of a, of a weapon, brandishing a weapon. Which, which requires one of the essential elements of that case is that the, the weapon be readily capable of lethal use. And of course, Patty's pistol wasn't, and then the, the circuit attorney had it sent to the crime lab taken apart, fixed, put back together, made it work, and then filed the charges. <laughs> I had heard some some Being, discussion about that. Yeah. I didn't realize they went to that length. No, you know, if you if you can't charge them on something else, just fake it up. <laughs> Make something up that you can. <laughs> Patty, what, what are your feelings about all this? Make it, well, I'm, I'm never thought this would happen to us. You know, I, I, I'm learning how to use a gun, number one. I, I'm happy to know that I'm not leaving security to my husband anymore just one of us anymore because that was always the thing I always thought you know husband's going to do the security rolls the trash cans out and deals with the yard and um, and uh, now I realize that I got to be responsible for myself too and uh, in fact is that he had he been the only one on that porch that day he couldn't see the whole thing that was going on in the front of the house so I really needed to be in the front of the house um, also even if I didn't have functioning done but um, <laughs> you imagine but I, her going out in front of that crowd with what she knows could not possibly protect her. Well, just just the, the awesome power, you know, the image of the, of the gun by itself is, is part of what, you know, makes the Second Amendment useful. Because you don't have to actually shoot anybody to protect yourself with a gun. You right? just have to physically have one in your hand. Well, it's a deterrent, yeah, a lot of people would say, right? Yeah, yeah. But But quite the deterrent. I, it's just a whirlwind. It was an amazing event uh, just after watching and going, hey, there's some Americans who are defending themselves on their property. This is, this is how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. And yeah. after the way it got flipped upside down, I mean, uh, you're still going through it. Well, think about it. You know, compared to everything else in the West End, we didn't get burned. We didn't get painted. Nobody got shot. Nobody got hurt. The, the mob had its opportunity to scream and shout and move down the way. Of course, when they got to the mayor's house, they did try to set fires. And then somebody confronted a Channel 5 reporter with an AK-47 and chased her off, right? Yeah. That's how peaceful this crowd was. <laughs> but in front of our house, that didn't happen. Well, and, and that's the way you do it. Patty, uh, what, what's going forward? How are you going to handle this stuff going forward? Well, um, you know, we still have, the, we can't be pardoned, even if the, the, the governor would want to pardon us. We can't be pardoned until we actually are convicted. So we need to be indicted first, and they're working on that, and then we have a trial setting. And then, you know, if we get convicted, then if Governor Parsons hopefully is the governor after that, then we could be pardoned should he choose to. But um, that's a long way down the road. It's two years maybe. Yeah. How much of this do you feel was even the slightest bit fair when it comes oh. down to it? Zero. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just astonishing. And a lot of people don't understand. Well, they're brandishing a weapon. They were, this is, this is, this is def self-defense at its basic. The entire neighborhood is private. We own the streets. We own the sidewalks. We own the gate that they City broke down to get nothing. in. City pays for nothing. This is all private property. The moment they broke down that gate, that was the end of anything they could pretend was a peaceful protest because they're breaking and entering at that point. And from that point on, you know, my understanding of the law is we'd be justified using lethal force to protect ourselves. We never left our property. We never fired a shot. All we did was we kept an angry mob at bay, and then we get charged. Amazing. Yeah, that, that's just what was mind-boggling because, I mean, in essence, when, when do you decide that your life might be threatened and, and you do have the right to, and you didn't even shoot a single bullet, no, right? No, no, and no, and no, just, no. To, just to provide the deterrent, which kept anything from, you know, tragic from happening, yeah. but now still, still felt the need to, to provide charges. Yeah. Kind of shocking that this would happen in America. I, th I feel like we're in some other foreign country where this this happens more often. You hear this. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, people that got cited for trespassers on 
uh, her Twitter page yesterday saying, oh, you know, I get cited for trespass and I had a gun waved in my face. Or like 700 comments saying, well, maybe if you didn't trespass, you wouldn't <laughs> have to have a gun waved in your face. And maybe if you're so close to them that you had a gun waved in your face, maybe if you didn't trespass, that wouldn't have happened. Right. Well. <laughs> Just astonishing what, what will happen, especially when the media essentially blows it out of perspective. We got to hear today a lot more of the facts of the case that yeah. weren't disclosed through the media. Um, do you feel the media has, has, has any sense of fairness with you at all, or is that another part of it that's just been off the rails? We still see in the, in the media this thing like where the gate was allegedly broken, although video shows them walking through an unbroken gate and all this kind of stuff. And we still see from time to time that no one called 911. I mean, sometimes uh, the uh, we get idiot interviewers that say, why didn't you just go in the house and, and video them on your cell phone from inside the house? My answer has always been the same. Do you want to have 300 angry people in your house burning things and breaking things and killing us? Or would you rather keep them on the outside? We chose to keep them on the outside. Well, I understand. You're back. Are you both attorneys? Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. And so, obviously, I have a good understanding of the law. And I guess there are specialties we all have. And I went to SLU, so half my fraternity brothers are lawyers. And yeah. so, uh, I do get good feedback whenever I have a particular issue with whatever. But, I mean, just kind of astonishing from that perspective. Lawyers being put in this position made such an example, almost of this as if there is something else, some ulterior motive. Uh, and I don't want to point any specifics, but does it seem... How far out of line does the whole thing seem to you? Is it beyond? Is there, is there an ulterior motive there? They knew his Mark's name. They, one of the guys standing on the front porch was calling me by my first name, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you when you add that to the expect us flyer on it that says, and a surprise, the fact wow. that they knew my name and they came down our street and broke in our gate and then were standing on my front porch calling me by name, I think we were the intended surprise. That's, that's a scary thought. Yeah. And that's... Something you don't imagine we deal with here in America. Like going back to the old wild, wild west. Absolutely. I'm a cowboy, and I finally did buy myself a gun years ago when the Michael Brown issue became, because there, there were a seven-minute drive from the highway mm -hmm. if anybody came down to, to do that. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to be on our show. Well, it's my pleasure. God's, God's speed and, and, and safety going forward, and, and I, I know you're going to pull through this, and, and uh, it'll be in your favor. Uh, it's just astonishing. But you've got the right resources to do so. I appreciate it. I hope so. Uh, thank you very much, and ha thank you for having us on your thank show. Thank you for having us. Appreciate Mark, it. thank you, guys. Thank ladies, you. ladies and gentlemen, Cardinal Cowboy Show, finishing up here at the, this has been an incredible rally today, um, Freedom Rally USA. I'm, we're called, <laughs> I've got, oh, and by the way, I want to show you the picture. These are the autograph. I do have an autograph picture now <laughs> from Patty and Mark. I will put this on my uh, Twitter feed, Facebook, and all that stuff and share that with everybody. But thank you for, for checking out our Freedom Rally today. Stay tuned. Freedom USA Tour. Um, a lot more excitement coming. We're going to go to another event after this and, and, and mingle a little bit and hang out, and we'll report back to everybody with more freedom for us as Americans here in, in the United States. Thanks, everybody. Giddy up. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you very it. Much. This is the Cardinal Cowboy Show.